Hey y'all, in this video we're going to look at the converses of all of those triangle congruency conjectures. Uh, and there's just one of them. If two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding parts are congruent. And uh, that should seem obvious to you because of the definition of congruent figures. Their corresponding parts have to be congruent. Uh, so why is there a video on this, you may be asking yourself. Um, and it's because that this concept is a key component to many of the proofs you're going to do. Um, when we look at polygons, quadrilateral circles, um, you're actually going to be looking for congruent triangles. You're going to be seeking them out because you're going to have to to show that parts of them are, are congruent. And it happens uh, so often that you have to use this in proof that we're going to have an abbreviation for it. Um, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent uh, is something you have to write so often that instead of writing this all out, you're just going to write CPCTC. So let's look at two examples where this is going to show up. So in this first example, it's kind of obvious uh, which two triangles you're trying to show are congruent because there are only two triangles given to you. Um, so I'm given all the information in the figure. I want to prove that this side CO is congruent to BY, which means I have to get COL to be congruent to BYL, right? So if I look at my figure, I see an angle, a side, and an angle, and a side. Oh, so maybe I might want to prove those two triangles are congruent using angle, side, angle, um, which is the, the fastest way to do this. Um, you'll notice that I have vertical angles, which is one of those things you just kind of immediately want to, 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 look, to look at and acknowledge, right? So I know this angle, and I'm going to number them, right, one and two. I know that angle one is congruent to angle two because they are vertical angles, right? And then I know that triangle OCL is congruent to triangle Y, B, L, right? Oh, forget triangle. By angle, side, angle, right? Let's make sure I name those correctly. O, C, L, Y, B, L. Okay, I did. And then, um, so now, oh, it's super easy. I can say that C, O is congruent to BY by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now example two is a little more complicated because I don't know which triangles I need to use yet. I've got a ton of little triangles here. I have the big triangle ABC, a bunch of smaller triangles, you know, pairs of triangles, this little triangle here, like which one am I supposed to use? Um, and I'm going to show you this with two approaches. Okay, so I'm trying to prove that DB, which is this line segment here, is congruent to, to EA, which is that segment there. Now, geometry student me from, from long, long ago um, would just rush into the figure and see what I was given and then see what I could figure out from there. Um, and so then I see that this little angle here is congruent to that angle there, which means this triangle AFB is an isosceles triangle because those two base angles are congruent, and therefore I know that AF has to be congruent to FB. And then my little teenage brain would be like, oh, AF is a part of AE, and FB is a part of DB, and so I just, if I can show those two little parts, DF and FE, are congruent, then I can add those two together and I get AE is congruent to DB, right? And I can prove that DF and FE are congruent um, because if I know this is isosceles, then I know those two line segments are congruent. And then I have vertical angles there. So by angle, angle, side, I can show those two little triangles are congruent. And then by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, I can get those little pieces and then add another step about adding line segments together. Um, and actually that would be like three or four lines <laughs> to show that AF plus FE is equal to AE and they're all congruent and blah. Now, 
geometry teacher me has, has done a lot more math and become a lot lazier. So I take a different approach now, and this is the approach that I suggest that you take. So the first thing you should really do is look at what you're trying to prove, okay? Uh, I'm trying to prove that the segment DB is congruent to the segment EA. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight those on the drawing, okay? So I'm going to I need this line segment to be congruent to that line segment there, okay? Now, instead of seeing this as, oh, it's just like four little line segments, uh, uh, it's too much. I'm going to think about, okay, so DB is this, is this length here. Is that a whole side of a triangle? And is AE a side of a triangle? And they totally are. It's just the two triangles are overlapping and it's hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little template and I'm going to choose this triangle here because it looks like the little triangle that I'm trying to, to pull out of the bigger triangle. Okay. And so what, what this is is really like if I overlap them, you can kind of see that these two triangles is what I have up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw them out separately because this little bitty, this one extra step is going to shave off like nine steps of the actual proof that I need to do. Okay. And so I'm going to label the sides with the letters. Okay. And I need to show that DB and EA are congruent. And I'm going to start marking the angles. So I know that angle D up here is congruent to angle E over there. And then I have to be careful, right? Because I have two angles at A. I've got the little bitty angle and like the whole angle. Actually, I have three angles at A. I've got the little bitty angle, that other piece of the angle and the whole thing. And this congruence actually matches with this A here. And the same thing with this B, it matches with that B there, okay? And so then I like I have two two angles, yay! And all I need is a side. If I can show that one side of this is congruent uh, on on both the triangles, then I have the triangles congruent by angle angle side, right? And notice AB AB. So I do. Those sides are are congruent. So now if I actually want to write my proof up, I'm going to number these angles just to make it a little easier for me. Okay, so I can say angle one is congruent to angle two and angle D is congruent to angle E because those were given. Okay, that's like the first line of my proof. Okay, my second line of my proof is that AB is equal, oh, congruent, sorry, to AB. And you're like, yes, that's obvious. It is congruent to itself. This is called the reflexive property. It is a property of equality that we use in uh, geometry. And we don't really use that much in Algebra 1 because we don't say like 4 equals 4. Like we don't really need that. Uh, we do need it in geometry though. Okay, now then I can say, aha, triangle B, D, A is congruent to triangle A, E, B right? B, D, A, A, E, B. Okay. And I can say that's true by angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle. And then, oh, hey, I have D, B is congruent to E, A by C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So yay, I'm done. That's it. Just those four lines. And the, and the reason why it's only four lines is because I started with what I was trying to prove and I tried to find triangles where these two links were actually whole sides of the triangle. I mean, you could totally, you could totally write the 15 line proof that starts with looking at triangle AFB as being an isosceles triangle. Um, or I could write this oh, nice little four line proof uh, just by taking a different approach and looking for um, the overlapping triangles. And that's what's going to be the hard part when we start to, to do these proofs is trying to find uh, the right triangle that's most efficient. Okay, good luck.